The star of Alcade, located some 100 light years away, forms part of the Ursa Major constellation and is the 40th brightest star in the night sky. Alcade is a hot B3 main sequence star, so it seems quite strange that it's comparatively dim. Surely a B-class star, just 100 light years distance, should be much brighter. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we return to our brightest star series on a bit of a wild goose chase that ends with one of the strangest stars in our local vicinity. So, let's get to it. The strangely named star of Peacock, also recognised as Alpha Pavanus, resides 179 light years from Earth and belongs to the B3 main sequence, just like Alcade. Despite being positioned almost twice the distance of Alcade though, Peacock's luminosity is only slightly dimmer at 1.94 apparent magnitudes, which secures its rank as the 44th brightest star in the night sky. Nunki, or Sigma Sagittarii, is situated 228 light years away and again shares similarities with both Peacock and Alcade and is a B3 main sequence star, this time with a luminosity of plus 2.05. Nunki holds the 53rd position amongst the brightest stars in our night sky. Again, surprisingly, it's not actually significantly dimmer than Alcade, despite being over twice as distant. In essence, what I'm trying to tell you all is that Alcade is only 7% brighter than Peacock and only 19% brighter than Nunki, despite being roughly twice as close to both of those stars. The dimness of Alcade then sparks curiosity, and there are a couple of possible explanations as to why this might be the case. One idea revolves around interstellar reddening. This is a phenomenon where interstellar dust selectively absorbs shorter wavelengths of light more than do the longer ones. It can make a star appear dimmer and redder than it truly is, especially affecting bluer stars like Alcade. Another consideration is the presence of a dust and debris disk around Alcade, potentially impacting its observed brightness, particularly if these disks obscure the starlight. However, it's worth noting that B-type stars like Alcade aren't typically associated with prominent dust disks. So for now at least, the mystery of Alcade's relative dimness remains unknown. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or you know anything more about this particular star. Another blue main sequence star, Achenar, is for the most part only seen in the Southern Hemisphere. Positioned in the constellation of Eridanus, Alpha Eridanus, or Achenar, is not just the brightest star in its constellation, but it's incredibly the ninth brightest star in the entire night sky, and seemingly astonishingly, brighter than Betelgeuse, Altair, and Aldebaran, despite its relative anonymity compared to those stars. Achenar is about 139 light years away and is intriguingly a binary system, with the primary component being called Achenar and its companion informally known as Alpha Eridanus b. Achenar is approximately six times the mass of the Sun and has a stellar classification of B6VEP. Despite appearing similar to a main sequence star, it's believed to have depleted its hydrogen core recently and initiated a departure from the main sequence. Achenar has now expanded to an average radius eight times that of the Sun and is approximately 3,150 times more luminous. Alpha Eridani b, Achenar's partner, seems to be an A-type star with a mass about double the Sun and the two stars are separated by 7.35 astronomical units with an orbital period of seven years. Let's get something straight though. Achenar is not your average star in any way at all. First of all, it's a variable star with unpredictable changes in brightness. The exact causes of these fluctuations remain unknown. Secondly, as of 2015, Achenar holds the distinction of being the least spherical star known in the Milky Way. The rapid rotation of Achenar has moulded it into an oblate spheroid, a shape that's comparable to the dwarf planet of Haumea. Due to this distortion, there's a significant temperature difference based on latitude, and the pole registers a scorching 17,000 Kelvin, while the equator is cooler at 12,500 Kelvin resulting in an average temperature of about 15,000 Kelvin for the star. The intense polar temperatures generate a swift polar wind, and this ejects matter from the star and creates a polar envelope of hot gas and plasma. Thirdly, the star itself seems to pulsate, and its surrounding disk of gas, which is usual for category BE variable stars, indeed varies in shape and size, and occasionally disappears altogether. This circumstellar disk is however far from stable, and it periodically loses material back into the star. So what I'm saying, in essence, is that Achenar, a bit like the big bad wolf in Red Riding Hood, huffs and puffs material out, but then bizarrely breathes it all back in in a constant cycle. 
Achinoa is situated in the deep southern sky and never rises above the horizon of north of 33 degrees, roughly corresponding to the latitude of Dallas, Texas. For optimal viewing, one must look to the southern hemisphere, particularly in November. Curiously, some of you may know that the most isolated island on planet Earth is a tiny snow-covered peak in the southern Atlantic Ocean called Bouvet Island. Its closest neighbour is the uninhabited continent of Antarctica. Well, another peculiarity about the Achenar star is that until about March 2000, it, along with Fommelhout, held the title of being the first magnitude stars farthest away from any other stars in our sky. The nearest neighbours were indeed each other. However, unlike Bouvet Island, Achenar has since lost the crown and Antares is actually now the most isolated first magnitude star. Located in the constellation of Scorpius, Antares is, however, surrounded by many bright second magnitude stars. In contrast, the stars neighbouring Achenar and Fommelhout are considerably fainter. Interestingly, and again unlike Bouvet Island, the journey of Achenar is actually continuing, with northern movement anticipated in the next few millennia. By the year 8000 to possibly 11000 AD, Achenar will have migrated northwards sufficiently to become visible as far north as Germany or southern England. In today's graphic, we see a beautiful mountain scene somewhere on Earth. The sun shines brightly in the sky with its usual minus 26.74 apparent magnitude, but we feel there's something afoot in the solar system. We see the strange blue-white star of Achenar appear, dazzling every one of us, some 3,150 times brighter than the sun. Everything in this once beautiful scene turns into a superheated hell world. Water boils, snow melts, and as the heat increases, we realise that under this incredible star, all life on Earth would soon become extinct. Exactly how fast it would heat up the atmosphere is something that remains unknown. But one thing's for sure, all the bread on our Earth would soon become toast, and the planet's destiny would be to become a scorched lava world under this magnificent but terribly strange blue star. B-type main sequence stars are anything but regular. The star of Alcade is bizarrely fainter than other stars that theoretically are very similar to it, like Peacock or Nunke. These peculiarities don't end there though, and another B-class main sequence star is one of the weirdest, most peculiar stars of all, Achenar. Achenar is anything but round and is more akin to a rugby ball than a football or soccer for our American followers. Achenar huffs and puffs before it then breathes its own material back in, in regular cycles, and is so bright it's the ninth brightest star of all in our night sky. Achenar likes being alone and is one of the most isolated stars in the sky. Over the next millennia, however, this peculiar duckling will slowly move northwards, continuing to shine proudly and hold its place as one of the most incredible stars known to humanity. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, let me know in the comments below and next week your idea could show up. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family as well, and I'll see you on the next one.